welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be updating you guys on the process of this <sighs> painting that has completely consumed my life. So, yeah. A lot of this stage is just about the inking process I had to do for the border, but right here I am adding some more details with gouache paint, and at the very end of the video I do the same thing. So for the border I used micron pens, and I'm using different sizes for different areas of the shading. For the shading around the faces on the cherubs I'm drawing, I used a thinner tipped one. I think this was a 0.3? Is it 0 0.03? I don't know. It's the one with the 3 on it that's like really small. It's not the skinniest one in the variety pack you get with Micron, but it's like the second smallest one. And I did that just because... The features around faces tend to be very intricate compared to like an arm and I just wanted to make sure all of the detailed areas got the shading they needed and then I moved on to the areas that needed bolder lines like the arm and any harsh shadows cast on the back of the cherub and things like that. Now, when I did the shading on the cherub, I made sure to kind of go with the contours of the shape I was shading just to make it look more fluid and three-dimensional. I know it is stylized. I'm not trying to make it look super realistic, obviously. I want this to look like an etched drawing, kind of, like how money is often portrayed. So. I tried my best to just round out the shading to make it pop more, not necessarily make it look realistic. Because had I just done flat lines, like straight lines and done cross hatching, that kind of, it has the tendency to flatten the image, even though you are adding dimension by still shading it, the direction of the lines really adds another feeling of depth to your shading. So just something to think of if you ever try out this technique. I think I have already said this so much in these process videos for this painting, but oh my god, this was the worst. <laughs> I hate doing lettering. I'm not a lettering artist. Yes, that is a specialty that some people do. They create fonts because they have magical, skilled hands that they've worked very hard to achieve <laughs> to make these amazing letters and I have not I have not gotten that skill let me tell you I even traced this and I'm still not super happy with how it turned out but you know what I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let it be all right I just used basically the same method I was using with the cherubs I added some texture in the very center and I kept a thin outline of the green in the letters just to make them pop. And then on the edges of the banner and the cherubs, I'm using a brush pen. I think this one was Prisma, but later on I wound up using um, Micron, their brush pen. It's like the same thing. And I'm doing some cross hatching here with that. That's Kind of feathery looking and this just really adds a lot of depth and makes everything pop against the background of the border.
So I'm doing pretty much the same thing I did for the other cherubs I drew. Um, but I just wanted to add in <laughs> that um, this is technically, this was technically like when I was like, all right, I'm pretty much done with this painting. But I do have a tendency to become like obsessive over my art, especially if it was a piece I put a lot of thought and energy into. And I worked on this for a couple months. Um, not straight, like every single day, no. But I was looking at it for two months. And I don't think <laughs> that's really good. I think when you get to a point on a painting, it's hard to say when it's finally done because you're always going to find something you can change to make it better. And I often find if I give myself a week to stop looking at it, I end up accepting the minor flaws and just being like, you know what, I, I think I'm happy with it. You know, because I could work on this forever and it would still not make me happy if I keep myself in that mindset. So I have to look away from it for a while and um, I <laughs> I feel a little bit better about it now. I did add some more details to it. I'll probably make another video, um, not so much a me explaining the process kind of video, but I, I actually have a really cool idea um, for my next video. but. My point is, in the next video, I'll show you some of the minor details I did at the very end um, that made the whole painting pop just a little bit more, um, but yeah. And then, um, <laughs> I still wasn't happy with the text because I don't paint text. I really haven't that much. And I'm thinking like, man, do I really want to change that? Is that something I want to learn how to do? Because I have ideas for future drawings and paintings that would include Roman numerals and things like that. And I'm like, dang, maybe this is something I need to learn how to do. And then I'm going to look back in time like, oh, wow, this was my first painting with text in it. And it's really shitty. But you know what? That's okay. <laughs> um, that's okay. Why, why am I like this? But, you know, I, I'm, I, might, I might try to get better. Do I look at the text now and think like, yes, there are things that could be better absolutely but you know I'm done I'm emotionally done with this thing uh, so I'm kind of over it I've accepted that it, it turned out the way it did um, I added some more gouache paint because since the letters on the top are a lot more condensed and smaller than the words at the bottom I wasn't able to fit in as much texture and detail as I did on the bottom ones and when I tried matching the amount of texture with the top ones to the bottom ones, it didn't look good. It didn't look good. And then I put in gouache paint and it kind of, 
I tried matching the green color to the color of the banner, but it graded out a little bit because of the ink I used. And it kind of bothers me, but looking at it now after setting this down for a week, it doesn't bother me as much as it first did. Um, and with the texture I then added later, um, very delicate this time, um, it kind of disguises it and it doesn't bother me too much looking at it now. Um. <laughs> oh, wow. So here you're seeing me kind of mess with the final details a bit. I do have more footage of this um, where I get a, <laughs> a little too obsessive over the details, but whatever. Um, right now, I am adding the pan pastels, and it just looks like makeup, really. I use a sponge, and I just added highlights all over, and I also blended in a little bit more watercolor pencil to make a nice color shift within the poppy petals, and at this point, I was like, all right, I think this is done. I think. And that was it for this week's process video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Next week, I'm thinking about uploading another ghost story if you guys liked that last video I did. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And I will see you next week. Bye!